let me say shalom to everyone. It's such a great pleasure to address such a distinguished audience. I am deeply moved. I've seen two televised addresses from two prime ministers, Chancellor Merkel and Prime Minister Abe. So there is a trick, you know, if you have two televised statements uh, from different prime ministers, the sad one is alive and free of charge. <laughs> you know, thinking about my speech, I was thinking about the history. How much we have in common. Ukrainians and Jewish community, we have experienced too much. We have lived through very difficult times. And we faced unspeakable evil. Just last month, all of us commemorated the end of the Second World War in Europe. And I was thinking, how could it happen? It's just beyond the reason. When millions of Jews were killed in the Holocaust, for what? Just for their desire to live and to exist as a nation, as a human being, as a people? When millions of Ukrainians during the Great Famine, or Holodomor, had been killed by Soviets for the same reason. For their desire to exist and to flourish as a nation. But we've passed through this. We survived. And we exist. And we will survive, and we will fight, and we will fight all our enemies, because we are strong nations. For today, my country is facing a tremendous challenges. You are well aware that we have a neighbor. Israel have similar neighbors <laughs> that actually illegally annex Crimea and for today Russia that illegally annexed Ukrainian territory actually launched a crackdown on Crimean Tatars on their liberties and their human rights then Russian led terrorists and Russian troops invaded Donetsk and Lugansk which is the eastern part of Ukraine and Russia started to intimidate the entire world so we are facing the real war with Russia. Ukraine is the only country in the world that is fighting against the Russian regular army. We succeeded in deterring Russian military. And I commend and truly appreciate the efforts of AJC, David, and your personal contribution in sending the letter to the White House with a clear claim to support the Ukrainian people in our fight against the Russian-led aggression. Ukraine is defending not only Ukraine. We are defending Europe, and we are defending an international law and order. So... <laughs> so it's not just about us. I mean, it's not just about the Ukrainian people. This is about the globe. Why Ukraine matters to the world and to the United States of America? You probably do remember that in 1994, Ukraine, together with the US, UK, and another country which is neighboring to Ukraine, signed a notorious Budapest Memorandum. Put it in a nutshell, Ukraine relinquished one of the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. And we were promised to get guarantees of our territorial integrity, independence, and sovereignty. 
no weapon on the one hand. On the other hand, we lost Crimea and we lost the east of Ukraine. And this concrete fact actually undermines our global efforts of nuclear non-proliferation. Just imagine, one can play with this, for example, in Iran or another country saying that, look, this country abandoned the nuclear weapon and they lost the territory. So what kind of additional guarantees we can get? And this is the lesson, and we have to, to, to draw out of this lesson very important issues. Ukraine matters too much for nuclear non-proliferation, and Ukraine matters too much for the peace and stability in the entire Europe. We strongly believe that we will regain control over Donetsk and Lugansk, and I strongly believe that the time will come and Crimea will be again the part of Ukraine, and we will control our territory. Once again, one Ukraine matters, because Ukraine matters for the unity of all members of the European Union. Ukraine matters for the unity of the free world. For today, the free world is in jeopardy. And this is the war not just between Ukraine and Russia. This is the war between the past and the future. This is the war between the dark and the light. This is the war between the freedom and dictatorship. And to win this war, we have to be united. United, we win. Divided, we fail. Nothing has changed after Abraham Lincoln. So we have to stay united with our European friends. And we have to be united between the United States and the European Union. Your unity is the best recipe and the best answer to any aggressor and to any aggression. United and strong respond to those who want to undermine the global order, to those who want to draw the new lines after the Second World War, to those who do not respect freedoms, liberty, who do not respect democracy, and who do not respect our nations. They are our enemies. It's a really a great privilege for me to address you. And on behalf of my country, on behalf of my government, let me tell you just very simple words. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your open hearts and minds. We will never surrender. We will fight and win. We will succeed. This is our future. Thank you so much for having a chance to address you.